are great moments followed, moments and players that have written a rich history in what is in reality such a short time. Tonight, the Mets celebrate their rich history and they honor the players that have written this truly amazing story. They are the years that will dominate as far as the players that you will see tonight on the field. Championship baseball played by the New York Mets. Tonight, the Los Angeles Dodgers are in town for game two of the series against the Mets, but a very special evening here tonight it is the Mets All-Amazing Team Night, the 40th anniversary celebration, where that team will be introduced to the fans. Hello, everybody. I'm Gary Thorne. Welcome. WB11, happy to be part of the ceremonies tonight. We're going to bring them to you live from Shea Stadium. Many, many, most, in fact, of the players that were selected by the fans as the best of the New York Mets over the last 40 years are on hand here tonight. It is a one-of-a-kind night. You don't get this group of people together, maybe never again. Tonight, though, it will be the memories of Tom Seaver and Lenny Dykstra, Mookie Wilson and the infamous ground ball, and the leadership of Keith Hernandez. The celebration when we come back to Shea. And welcome to the New York Mets 40th anniversary celebration. Tonight, we are proud to announce your selections for the All Amazing Team. From April through June, you, the fans, voted in person and online for the Mets who best represent the team at each position through its first 40 years. Over 27,000 ballots were cast, the results have been tallied, and tonight, we are pleased to share them with you. So relax, reminisce, and most of all, enjoy 40 years of Mets nostalgia. And now, without further ado, we turn the program over to your MC for the evening, Mets broadcaster, Gary Thorne. Thank you very much and welcome, everybody. 40 years of Mets baseball have brought two championships, four pennants, six trips to the playoffs, and countless memories. Our next two guests have seen them all. Between them, they have called approximately 6,000 games. Please welcome Ralph Kiner and Bob Murphy. After his Hall of Fame playing career in Pittsburgh, Ralph Kinder took up permanent residence in the Mets play-by-play -play booth. Forty years of broadcasting distinction have earned him three Emmy Awards and an induction into the Mets Hall of Fame. Bob Murphy, another original Met. Like Ralph, Bob has called games on television and radio since 1962. He was inducted into the Mets Hall of Fame in 1984 and the broadcasting wing of the Baseball Hall of Fame 10 years later. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is a great personal pleasure for me to announce that the New York Mets have named the television and radio broadcast booths after these two legendary Mets. Tonight's game and all future home games of the Mets will be called from the Ralph Kiner television broadcast booth and the Bob Murphy radio broadcast booth. Brass plaques will be permanently affixed to the doors of the respective booths to commemorate this occasion. Congratulations, Bob and Ralph. Now we turn our attention to the team and your selection for all amazing skipper. In the Mets 40 years, they've managed to land a menagerie of great managers. Skippers with savvy, style, and personality. Some with their own language. They've been showmen and strategists, leather-faced, iron-fisted, and silver-tongued. Mets managers have had a flair for the dramatic, a knack for creativity, a penchant for winning. By way of tactics or antics, these skippers have successfully steered the Mets to several playoff berths. Ladies and gentlemen, your choice for manager of the All-Amazing Team, Gil Hodges.
After seven consecutive losing seasons, Gill guided the Mets to a miraculous 1969 World Championship. A longtime hometown hero for the Brooklyn Dodgers and the New York Mets, he hit the first home run in Mets history, a United States Marine and a New York legend. The manager of your amazing Mets, the late Gil Hodges, and here to accept on her husband's behalf, please welcome Mrs. Joan Hodges. And now, let's take to the field for a look at first baseman. In their first 40 years, 101 men have played first base for the Mets. Some stays were long, some brief, but the Mets have seen their share of brilliance both in the diamond and at the dish. First basemen have been glowing glove men, hunting bunts with amazing stunts. They've given and taken away with running dives and stunning drives. With the flashy mitt, timely base hit, or skyscraping home runs, Mets first basemen have towed the line with style. Ladies and gentlemen, your choice for all amazing first base, Keith Hernandez. Five-time All-Star, winner of 11 consecutive gold gloves, 1986 world champion. Keith was both the Mets co-captain and their field general. One of the best defensive players in Major League history, Keith Hernandez. Moving around the horn, we turn our attention to second base. Second base has been a pivotal position in the Mets' first 40 years, and many have played it perfectly. Mets second basemen have had a knack for coming through in the clutch. With fleet feet, sweet swing, and flashes of leather, these second baggers have delivered time and again. 96 men have played the part with understated grace, high-octane drive, and cat-like instincts. Throughout the years, opposing teams have been muddled by the Mets' meddling middlemen. Fans, your choice for the All-Amazing second baseman, Edgardo Alfonso. A Met since 1995, an All-Star in 2000. Fonzie holds the club records for a single season with home runs and RBI by a second baseman. Has collected a club record 17 postseason RBI. On August 30, 1999 in Houston, he put together the best offensive game in Mets history. All amazing, second baseman Edgardo Alfonso. We continue around the infield. A look at Mets shortstops. It's poetry in motion. The slick, quick, sliding, darting, and diving play by Mets shortstops has been breathtaking. 91 Mets have stopped runners short, gunning down even the fastest of foes. The Mets have had their human highlight reels, middle infielders making plays beyond belief. In short, their leather has been flawless, record-settingly so. Mets shortstops have been stop gaps nabbing the hardest of hops and even fielding the odd foul ball. Your choice for all amazing shortstop, Bud Harrelson. <laughs> 1969 world champion, 1973 pennant winner, gold glove shortstop, two-time all-star. Buddy once swiped home twice in one week. He ranks second in club history in games, played and in triples. He is fifth in hits. Player, coach, manager, and all amazing shortstop, Bud Harrelson. Let's take a look at the men who have played the hot corner. Third base has been a tough bag to hold for the Mets. 40 years have seen a slew of third sackers as 122 men have tamed the hot corner, gliding, diving with golden glove or barehanded heroics. They've packed some punch in the field and from both sides of the plate. Their play has been grand, 
creating many a memorable moment, putting many a game in the bag. And for all amazing third baseman, your choice, Hojo Howard Johnson. A two-time All-Star Game starter, Hojo had a trio of 30-30 years. 1991's National League leader in home runs at RBI. He also ranked second on the Mets' all-time list in homers, RBI, stolen bases, and doubles. Today, he manages the Brooklyn Cyclones. All amazing third baseman, Howard Johnson. Completing the trip around the diamond, we turn to the catcher's position. The men behind the mask have often been behind the Mets' success. 63 catchers have called games for the Mets. Some were superheroes, nabbing potential robbers, hitting Herculean homers, and seeing that justice prevails. They've been leaders, both in the battery and with the bat. They've been record breakers and game breakers, at or behind the plate, these backstops have often been the backbone of the Mets' attack. Fans, your selection for All-Amazing catcher, Mike Piazza. A career 322 hitter, Silver Slugger and National League All-Star in each of his first nine years. Second only to Carlton Fisk in all-time home runs by a catcher. He picked up his 1,000th career RBI early this year. Your amazing catcher, Mike Piazza. Over the years, many men have filled the outfield gaps at Shea but only three were named all amazing. The Mets have had their angels in the outfield. They've galloped the deep and narrow gorge at the polo grounds and covered the friendlier field at Shea and every park in between. They've played with flair, with headlong abandon, and with polish. They've belted roof-raising blasts, swiped many a base, sniped many a runner and grip those incredible grabs. 210 Mets have played the outfield in the first 40 seasons, ably guarding the green of the great Flushing Meadow. Ladies and gentlemen, your first All-Amazing outfielder, number one, Mookie Wilson. A Mets rookie in 1980. Mookie holds the team record for career stolen bases. He is one of the all-time favorite Mets among teammates and fans. Former player, current coach, the only man who moves his fans to move. All amazing outfielder, Mookie Wilson. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your second all amazing Met outfielder, Lenny Dykstra. Another product of the Mets farm system. Lenny was a key contributor to the 1986 World Championship. He ran, he hit, he scaled walls, and sometimes tried to go through them with speed, guts, and surprising power. The man nicknamed Nails, all amazing outfielder Lenny Dykstra. And finally, to round out the all amazing outfield, you have chosen. Daryl Strawberry. A 1983 Rookie of the Year, Mets career leader in round trippers, RBI, extra base hits, and runs. Five-time All-Star, All-Amazing outfielder, 
Daryl Strawberry. It's indeed a pleasure to be here today. Thank you, fans, for all the support over the years that you have given to me. I'd like to say to Mookie and Lenny, it was indeed a pleasure to be able to be a part of the outfield with you two. I'd like to say to my children that I truly love you guys very much, and I thank you for being there today to represent me. I just want to let you guys know that my life is getting better, and I'm on the right road. And to all the wonderful people in New York, I will never forget all the wonderful things that you have done for me. I will continue to keep you guys in my prayer, and I would ask you guys to continue to keep me in your prayers. May God bless you all, and thank you for this special day. And ladies and gentlemen, here to represent Daryl are his two sons, DJ and Jordan Strawberry. With the defense in place, we turn our attention to the bench. The starters get all the glory, but in a pinch, the team must turn to its bench. And Mets pinch hitters have had a history of late-inning heroics. Cold off the bench, these super subs quickly got hot, drawing the timely walk or whacking the improbable hit, and winning the must-win game. The bench has given veteran players a new lease on life, as understudies, they have starred, and Mets hitters have, time and again, come through in a pinch. You have voted two pinch hitters to the team. Your first all-amazing pinch hitter is Ed Cranepool. An original Met, Steady Eddie spent his entire career in the orange and blue. He holds the franchise record with 90 career pinch hits, including a four-year pinch hitting average of 396 and a major league leading 486 average. In 1974, New York native and Mets Hall of Famer Ed Cranepool. Fans, your second selection for the all-amazing pinch hitter. Look, Grand Orange, Rusty Stahl. <laughs> Only the 11th major leaguer to tally 100 pinch hits and 11th all-time in games played. Rusty spent two distinguished stints with the Mets and a third as a broadcaster restaurateur, wine connoisseur, and pinch hitter extraordinaire. The Big Apple's own Grand Orage, Rusty Stop. And now, with the offense solidified, your amazing team needs some pitchers. Pitching has always been the Mets' pride. The first 40 years has seen a deck full of aces, curlers with a lot on the ball. Inning after inning, outing upon outing, Mets pitchers have shined. They've been magicians, making balls dance, dip, and slide. With knee-buckling breakers and head-turning fire, Mets pitchers have induced many a big-game goose egg. Their surgical precision and terrific timing has drawn appreciative coups from the crowd. Ladies and gentlemen, your choice for the righty All-Amazing starter, Tom Saver. Quick picture right here. Quick picture right here. Yeah. Rookie of the Year, 1967. Three-time Cy Young Award winner. Tom Terrific leads all Met pitchers in career starts, wins. ERA, strikeouts, shutouts. They called him the franchise for a very good reason. Hall of Fame right-hander, Tom Seaver. And from the other side of the rubber, your choice for all amazing Southpaw, the starter, Jerry Kuzman.
Congratulations. A two-time Met All-Star and 1969 a world champion. Goose posted a 204 World Series ERA, capturing two of the Mets' four wins. A 20-game winner in 1976 and a Mets Hall of Famer. Left-handed starter, Jerry Kuzman. And now, to complete our pitching staff, we call on the bullpen. Tie game, no one out. The base is full to bursting. Ring on the bullpen. The relief pitcher has a formidable task, and in 40 years, many Mets firemen have proved its equal. They've been a motley crew, leaders, pranksters, and screwballs. They've thrown with guts, pitching out of jams that turn others to jelly. Whether they've needed a single out or four scoreless frames, they've offered relief with militant cool or virulent heat. And so often, they've been the Mets' saving grace. And your choice for the all-amazing right-handed fireman, Roger McDowell. Right here with these guys. 1986 world champion and winner of the deciding seventh game. Roger offered the Mets both pitching and comic relief, but his success on the mound was no joke. All amazing reliever, Roger McDowell. And finally, to complete the roster, your choice for the all and Southpaw reliever, none other than John Franco. He's a New York native and the first Met to lead the league in saves. John not only holds the franchise saves record, he has collected more saves than any other lefty in baseball history. And he is now Mets captain, John Franco. Before we conclude the pregame festivities, 
We would like to welcome two very important men to the mound. Mets Vice President Bob Mant and groundskeeper Pete Flynn. In 1962, while the fledgling Mets took their first awkward steps, young Bob Mant started in the Mets box office at the Hotel Martinique. Forty seasons later, Bob is still with the team. He is a vice president and a veritable Mets historian. Fresh off the boat from Ireland, 21-year-old Pete Flynn was hired as a handyman at the Polo Grounds. By 1974, he was the head groundskeeper. Four decades later, he can still be seen strolling the field at Shea. Bob and Pete, this ceremonial first pitch is for you. A round of applause, Bob Mann, Pete Flynn, and your all-amazing team. Thank you, everybody. the Mets announcing the all-amazing team, part of the 40th anniversary festivities here at Chase Stadium. Joined by the left-handed starting pitcher on that all-amazing team, Jerry Kuzman. And Jerry, what's it like being back on the field with Bud Harrelson and Cranepool and Seaver? Got to bring back memories. Well, I get to see the guys probably once or twice a year, but this is a special occasion. And being uh, honored uh, to make the 40th uh, all-amazing team, is uh, there's really a special place in my heart, and I'll remember it forever. Uh, we did have a great exciting time in 69, naturally that's the year most of our fans remember. But I'd uh, really like to thank him for uh, getting me in here. You mentioned 69, you won two World Series games in that World Series. What was it like, Game 5, you record the last out, this place goes nuts, you had essentially shocked the world. Well, I go out for the ninth inning and I was very nervous because to know we're up two runs, we win this game, three more outs, we don't have to go back to Baltimore. So uh, in my warm-up pitches, I couldn't, uh, I didn't have a curveball. I was just, my adrenaline was slowing so much, I couldn't handle it. So all I threw was fastballs in the ninth inning. And the, the noise in here was so extremely loud, you couldn't hear the crack of the bat. So when Davey Johnson hits that, hit that last fly ball to left field, I couldn't hear it. So I didn't know how hard he had hit it. So boom, your heart stops for a split second. To, turn around, look at Cleon, see how he's reacting. And then he runs back a little ways to the you know, edge of the warning track, turns around and catches the ball. It's just like your heart stopped again. You just can't believe it's over with and you win. And as you come back as a, as a former Met, how has Major League Baseball changed from the, from the Met teams you were on in the 60s and 70s to what you see here today? Well, I'm probably not a good person to ask for that because I'm not around the game very much anymore. I retired in 80, uh, after the 85 season. But um, watching on TV, naturally you see the changes I see is, um, you know, National League playing American League games. Uh, the umpiring now all looks the same. There's no outside chest protector. Um, I hear they're using one baseball, just a major league ball rather than American League, National League ball. And uh, I hear the ball's livelier, the ballparks are getting smaller. You wouldn't like that, would you? No, so I, I think we ought to turn things around and get the <laughs> fans to vote, uh, hey, let's do something for the pitchers. All right, Jerry Kuzman, thank you very much. We will have first pitch between the Mets and the Dodgers, Odalis Perez and Pedro Astacio after this. Mets baseball is next on the WB11. Stick around.